Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Awesome, awesome. I see a lot of thumbs up. Good morning. My name is Giovanni Estrada, and I'm with the International We Love You Foundation. We're so happy you're able to join us again. This week has been amazing. Actually, this week is Earth Week, this month is Earth Month, and this Friday is Earth Day. And we're so excited you, you have been able to join us. We hope you all have been inspired to even take action. So the theme of this week is invest in our planet. So why should we invest in our planet? It's because you all are the future of our planet. And you and I have the responsibility to take care of this world. So by simple steps or by simple daily actions that we take, we can truly take on this initiative. So we want to thank so much our, our partners and also our sponsors who have allowed us to put this together as well. Uh, so a huge shout out to Junior Achievement who work on the three pillar, pillars, which is entrepreneurship, work readiness, and financial literacy. And also a huge shout out to Hayward and Waste Management. Again, thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, we're truly honored you're here this week. This week we had professors who work in the field. We had someone who worked in the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. Yesterday we had someone who works uh, with the White House. And today we have someone else. So again, we're so excited you're able to join us. And before we dive into this, we just want to do one more quick introduction on who is the International We Love You Foundation. So the International We Love You Foundation is an NGO. It's a non-governmental -gover organization. And we are associated with the United Nations Department of Global Communications. Since we are, are living here in this world, we see ourselves like a big global family. And we carry out many events, but the way that we do this is through a mother's love. So through a mother's love, we believe that we can really make an impact and make a change all throughout the world. My biggest role model is a chairwoman of the International We Love You Foundation. Her name is Zhang Gilja. She says, love is needed now more than ever in our society. When we take a look at what's going on here in this world, there's so many things that need to get done. So that's why we believe that through a heart of a mother, we can honestly make a true impact. And we are associated with the United Nations since 2018. There's a lot of events that we do all throughout the world, and they align with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Basically, we work with local governments, local communities, understand the needs of the community, and tailor events based off their needs. Here are some initiatives of what we do, clean world movement, education, international aid, health, emergency relief. But today we'll see quickly something in education and also environmental initiatives. So in 2020, we were able to donate 400 uh, Chrome devices at a school. In 2021, we were able to do a campaign and raise funds to donate 2,000 backpacks. And also, we do cleanups, parks and beaches. And also, as you all know, this Sunday, we're also going to have a cleanup. So we hope that you can partner with us. If you all have any ideas, we're more than happy to collaborate and make whatever you have a reality. Again, thank you all so much for joining. So before we start, I want to go back to this nice template that Junior Achievement put together. Remember, this template has a bio, right, of the speaker today. You can also write down interesting facts and also some questions. But please feel free to input your questions even throughout the session. So I'm excited for our speaker today. I hope you all are excited. Before we even begin, we want to show you a quick video about her. So stay tuned. This Friday is Earth Day, and it's often celebrated with beach cleanups and other efforts to protect our environment. But this week's hometown hero works to clean our coast every day. Diane Bueller started her nonprofit Friends of Palm Beach eight years ago after moving here to find an ocean that needed her just as much as she needed it. 
The need to heal and to be by the ocean, um, that is my happy place. After losing friends on 9-11 and supporting relief efforts at Ground Zero, Diane Bueller decided it was time to leave Wall Street and head to West Palm Beach. She'd been coming to South Florida on diving trips for decades, but it wasn't until she was living here full time she realized our slice of paradise needed protecting. When I moved here to heal, um, I found an ocean that needed me and animals that needed help because of the inundation of, of plastics and trash that are in our Atlantic Ocean. Diane started organizing monthly beach cleanups with the help of the Solid Waste Authority, but she quickly learned that wasn't enough to keep up with all the trash. As we would leave a beach on those monthly cleanups and the trash was still just coming in with the winds. So I realized then and there that I needed to do this more. She officially started her nonprofit Friends of Palm Beach in 2014 with the mission of cleaning our beaches one bucket at a time. Now her small but dedicated crew cleans seven and a half miles of Palm Beach's coastline five days a week and works to educate the community about all types of pollution. But the reality is everything you use at home, we will find on the beach. To date, the group has removed more than 230,000 pounds of trash from our shoreline. I had no idea the amount that we were going to collect. Um, I knew I was going to make a, a, a dent, but it's huge. It's huge what we're able to get. And that, unfortunately, is only a small percentage of what is out there. We all need to lend a hand, as small as it is picking up um, a piece a day, five pieces a day. It, it, it makes a difference. You know, what I love is that Diane isn't just helping our beaches. Her nonprofit is also a transitional work program. So she recruits people from agencies like the Lord's Place and Vita Nova that help the homeless and former foster children land on their feet. Wow. You can learn more about Diane's efforts in this month's issue of Palm Beach Illustrated. She is my featured hero. She's doing a lot of great work. She is awesome. Everything that she's doing, all coming down after 9-11, all that emotion coming in and putting that to great work. Gotta love it. So that was truly amazing. We are so honored to have Diane with us. So everyone, please join me with a huge round of applause for Diane Bueller. Awesome, awesome. So Diane Bueller, she's the founder of Friends of Palm Beach. She's actually started her career in Wall Street, and she has a huge passion when it comes to scuba diving. So Diane, how do you feel today, or just in general, for this Earth Month or this Earth Week? Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Um, well, as you can see behind me, um, I love that everybody has the focus now on um, Earth Week and Earth Day, but every day in my world um, is Earth Day. I grew up on a, on a beach and um, I was exposed to the environment from my parents at a very young age and the need to protect it. Wow. So I can start my presentation now? Yes, for sure. That was, uh, again, the video we saw was truly inspirational. All the students are very excited to hear about your journey. So, yes, please take it away. We'd love to hear more. Okay, thank you. If I can do this correctly. Okay, great. Well, here's my turtle. Here's my recycle sign. All pulled together on our planet, which is what we aim to protect. Here I am in my goofy outfit that I wear every day. It's, it's funny to me, um, for decades I was in a suit and I was in uh, pantyhose and pumps and I went to corporate America. My first venture actually though was to go to college to be a teacher. So I went to a school in upstate New York for education um, and changed my, uh, my major midway when a few little kids threw up on me in a um, practice class. So I realized maybe I didn't want to teach right then and there and I fell in love with accounting. So I Excuse had no me. idea about cost accounting, which people will tell you, wow, cost accounting, lots of numbers, kind of boring, but I loved it. Numbers were my love. And that then, in the time I was in my four-year college, took me to business administration and accounting as a minor. And I got out of school, uh, armed with my degree to go to an accounting firm, found it quite boring actually, but the uh, individual that was mentoring me helped me find my way to Wall Street, which was exciting. I knew nothing about it. I was a uh, contracting construction's daughter and um, knew manual labor mostly, but 
Now I knew this exciting world of Wall Street and I got in on a lower level position and worked my way up to uh, a bond trader where there was very, very, very few women and still are many more now, but in the uh, late eighties, there were very few women in these, in these jobs. But I uh, was raised as a, uh, I could do anything. I had two brothers and a sister and I felt that um, I could take on the world. And I did in a way, work my way up, um, finding myself um, in this bond trading position and then into the sales position and different iterations of jobs in the financial world, investment world of intangibles. Uh, and then 9-11 happened and it took the wind out of my sales as it did with many other people and I lost friends. And for the decades along this way, my solace was scuba diving. No phones there, no crazy trading floor there. Scuba diving was my passion and my zen. So I moved to Palm Beach, West Palm Beach, where I knew we had phenomenal diving and um, reinvented myself there uh, with help of people that I met along the way. I didn't know anybody here, but I reinvented myself with a job at a bank. But then my real job and passion was volunteering um, for the beach cleaning because as the video said, I realized all of this trash was, was coming ashore here. So I love that waste management is a sponsor here because it fits right into my now waste management role with my hard working labor, um, day to day changing lives and beaches one bucket full at a time and investing in tangibles and our tangibles is our environment and our parks and our waterways and everything that supports a healthy system and a healthy lifestyle and our paradise no matter where you live mountains or ocean um protecting that is is very important and that's um what I've learned and what I've learned about Florida, uh, only coming here to visit, but now living here and its juxtaposition of where we are in Palm Beach County. So let's talk trash. Well, the unfortunate reality is that we are collecting a boatload of trash um, on every day that we're out there. And uh, like the video said as well, 233,476 pounds to date since 2013 which a lot of that, 80% mostly, is um, plastics. Plastic pollution is, is um, getting greater and greater and greater with the oil industry pushing us into further and further um, renditions of plastic, which you'll see your cucumber is sheeted, which is plastic. Your um, produce is in plastic bags, which it never was before. So they're smarter than all of us when we're trying to eliminate plastic pollution. Uh, they're creating more and more of it. And we have the power um, to change that because we are in a, uh, a pandemic prior to the COVID pandemic, I call it. Um, we're in a state of emergency. Our waters are just overwhelmed and our oceans cannot handle it um, anymore. And this is being thrown ashore here in Palm Beach because of our position with the um, amazing currents in the Atlantic Ocean. Now, each ocean has their own currents. It's literally just a circle out there moving naturally with the pull of the planet and the moon and, and whatnot. Um, but this is what's here uh, in Palm Beach. We are closest to the Gulf Stream, which has become a conveyor belt of trash, which was only meant to be a conveyor belt of nutrients and animals and amazing marine life. But this allows us, uh, unfortunately, we get trash from uh, far away as West Africa and Cuba and Haiti, Central and South America. It uh, goes through the Atlantic, hits our loop current, and it comes right around to us in uh, on Palm Beach. You'll see that knuckle uh, where Lake Okeechobee is. We are the easternmost point um, of our peninsula in Florida. The uh, one way specifically to define this, and I define this to my crew, is we found what's called a safety sausage when you're scuba diving. Um, you use this to alert boats that you're at the surface. And this gentleman underwater here on the left was in Cosimo, Mexico for 4th of July weekend. And 20 days later, he lost his sausage on his boat. 20 days later, we found it on Palm Beach. It had his phone number on it. We gave him a call. He was very excited to get it back. He sent me a printing label. I mailed it back to him. But that wasn't a year later. That was 20 days later. So it's an amazing, strong current that allows for um, 
for you know animals but trash to move in and more closely here inland palm beach county the army corps of engineers drains lake okeechobee you hear about that every year when the when the rains come up and and we get the pollution that we get and the cyanobacteria but it also brings trash so all these blue lines are the the corps canals that move stuff to the intercoastal which then moves it out and about through the palm beach inlet and the boynton beach inlet to the ocean so i have picked up specifically trash from Royal Palm Beach on Mysuma Beach here on the intercoastal. And then that stuff is going out uh, to the ocean. So our, our trash, which you think is going at the curb, can end up on the street. I walk my dogs on recycle day and there's so much plastic on the streets that fall out of the bins and fall out of the truck that then go into our drainage systems and it goes to the waterways. And um, that's the unfortunate thing with what we're trying to contain and put in our recycle bin. But then there's so much trash that people are littering uh, in parking lots and streets and whatnot. So this is unfortunately what the beach will look like um, on any given day. And all this stuff is washing ashore. It's washing in on Palm Beach and all of our, our whole co coastlines. So we just happen to focus on Palm Beach because it's mainly private. And I have relationships that got us in there to be able to clean these areas. Um, and again, you'll see this is mainly plastics, but there's also medical waste, which is quite scary. Um, so be careful when you're out there. We're doing a study with Palm Beach Atlantic. I've uh, grown relationships with different universities to start in the Dominican as well. Um, so the scientists can figure out what it is and where it's coming from and how we can maybe stop that flow of this medical waste, blood vials, diabetic lancets, needles without caps, IV pouches coming ashore here in Palm Beach. Some of the more interesting things on the upper left you'll see what I thought was a stegosaurus. I was out on the beach, it was covered up. I thought, oh my God, I found a petrified stegosaurus, but it ended up being a part of an oil rig. And this is, all of these strakes is what they're called, pieced together like a puzzle to uh, wrap around the oil rig leg in the Gulf of Mexico um, to uh, diminish the vibrations that the Gulf caused, the waters of the Gulf cause on these rigs. Chevron had a breach. They all fell into the Gulf of Mexico. You saw that loop current before bring stuff right around to us. And they brought us four of them, actually. And four more were found um, north of, uh, of where we are. So how we do, what we do here, uh, we uh, have monthly cleanups. We started them again. We will start one this Saturday, actually, after COVID going forward, as do many other um, community groups that are cleaning up along our coast, Friends of Jupiter Beach, there's Loggerhead, there's Sea Angels, there's Surface 71, all doing phenomenal cleanups that you can join um, at any given time on different days. And we educate each time we have a cleanup. I do lectures at different um, schools and organizations and rotary clubs, um, and we're trying to in inspire um, changes in everybody's habits. Surface 71 is one of my um, prouder moments. Go, you will remember that I said I started out wanting to be a teacher. Well, I ended up kind of being a teacher or a mentor. Um, their science teacher from Countesston Middle School was inspired to uh, uh, teach the children about the plastics in the world as well. And they created Surface 71. 71% of our planet is water. They, this was four years ago, I believe, um, if not longer, but now they are still working. Uh, Marina Barto is leading the, the troops here to do the cleanups, and they made these phenomenal sculptures. Um, one is still out there, Harry. Um, that's nothing. Uh, that's doing great work. Harry is a hammerhead shark made out of plastics that speaks for the oceans and that these plastics are ending up everywhere, and we need to stop being the consumer of them. This uh graph right here is from Palm Beach Atlantic's one of the medical waste studies that I, I give them the medical waste. We give the data every day. We are collecting data on our sheets that we fill in and they have now um, accumulated the data and spit it out and showing us that the medical waste is more prevalent uh, in the uh, winter months with the winds being high. These are lollipop sticks. Loggerhead Marine Life Center is doing a lollipop study. We find these in such abundance, we collect them and we give them to Loggerhead. Uh, so I've become a scientist as well as a teacher. You just you just never know. Um, where are you going to lead yourself? I, this is following my passion and it worked out that I was able to actually um, uh, 
make it work. This is a study we're doing with Woods Hole that uh, is up in Massachusetts. This is oil uh, covered uh, plastics that we're finding and there was an oil spill in Venezuela and the State Department is working on stopping that spill. And my uh, uh, collection of all these items was shipped through FedEx at the FedEx store and gives the scientists things to work from. This is a woman I met. Uh, water pouches are used at the tune of eight million a day in Haiti for fresh water. They're little um, sachets of water where they bite the corner, they drink them and they throw them to the ground. Rose um, inspired the Haitians to create a small business of her own where they wash them, they iron them, they sew them and they make bags out of them and then they sell them to pay these people. So each bag puts 20 Haitians to work and saves 120 of these bags from coming into the environment. Um, we have relationships with many different schools and groups, as I said. This is um, some of them here, some of the schools we've worked with over the years, um, and the Breakers, um, and the um, Rosarian Academy, Kaiser University, um, the Rotary Club, like I said, and now um, Junior Achievement. Add that to the list. And specifically, the job that we do, and I pay my people to do, is we clean every day. Um, we're, we have a, a location set up from Sloan's Curve, if you know anything about the island over here, to the north end to the inlet. And we have this uh, document that they use every day. And every week, they, they document the poundage. They put um, codes to the hazmat that they find. And these are all the different locations. So we do this from Tuesday to Friday, there's a gentleman out on Monday on a machine that helps me. My machine is parked on the beach, and he collects as well. Um, and then we do it again the next Tuesday. So it's like that Groundhog Day movie. It's just necessary. Um, and it's been formalized because I guess my business brain that I learned oh so long ago, uh, I put that to work in doing this to make that possible um, for us to be, you know, citizen scientists now and to be able to teach people emphatically about the statistics that we have. This is part of my crew. I hire, um, I recruit from the Lord's Place and Vita Nova, no longer Stand Down, which is on the screen, but uh, the Lord's Place is a homeless advocacy group in Palm Beach County and Vita Nova helps, helps aged out foster youth to get to um, get back on their feet, to get on their feet, to stay on their feet. And I give them a, a job. If they want to stay with me, they're more than welcome to. Right now, um, these individuals are staying within their programs. I did find some individuals through COVID that lost their jobs and they're working for me now. And it's been, a, they were almost homeless. So it's a win-win there that they're out on the beach and they're um, collecting what they're collecting again every day, almost 175 pounds. Um, these are our boots on the ground and we have these vehicles that we go out with that we've got permission to do, which was another from my sales role many years ago. I used that to negotiate with the town to be able to um, use the vehicle out there because it was very much needed. On many days, we have filled that vehicle with different um, pieces of, of wood and bags filled with trash. So everything I've learned in my life getting here in my 50s has taught me how to be where I am now, which is following my heart and helping the environment um, do what we do. And the many reasons why we do it is because the town of Palm Beach does not do it. Tractors are a terrible uh, answer to cleaning a beach. They, they do a lot of damage. They, er they make what was a plastic bottle into a bigger amount of plastic. They bury it. Um, they're compressing the sand, which makes it easier to be sucked out by the ocean. So we don't want mechanical um, mechanics out there. We want Mother Nature to be doing what Mother Nature should be doing. This is what a beach is after a tractor has left it. it. It's what looks like a sandbox, but I call it a litter box because there is still litter within all of that smooth looking tractored raked beach. Um, and as some of you may or may not know, um, I hope you learn more about it this week, but the global reality on plastics is that there's just way too much of it. At the end of the day, numbers, numbers, numbers add up to a whole bunch of what we really don't need in our world. Your water bottle, if you forgot your reusable water bottle, buying that plastic water bottle may not get recycled correctly. We have a big issue with, re with recycling not being uh, done properly. Um, you know, 50 years ago, 
this recycling program started with Earth Day, and it was started by the companies that created the plastics. So think about that for a minute. If the plastic companies are pumping out these plastic bottles and they're the ones saying to recycle it, they're not paying for that. You're paying for that. So we as consumers need to understand that we can change our habits and not allow them to keep pumping out money for themselves and polluting our world. Coca-Cola is the number one polluter on the planet, and they don't have any skin in the end game. They don't have to pay for that bottle that needs to get recycled. They don't take it back. They just let you uh, manage it and you have to put it in a recycle bin. Your parents have to pay for the taxes to get that taken away. And it's a big, big, big circular system of not working right now. And we need to help it work better. This is the planet. These are all the oceans. Our Atlantic Ocean um, is what we focus on, of course. But all of them have the problems with the uh, currents that I talked about, the loop currents and the different currents, the trash belts, moving plastics around out there because it's Mother Nature swirling our oceans, but it's not filled with as much um, of the natural stuff anymore. It's filled with man-made um, plastics, which this is a New York Times photo of a recycle plant, which this does not necessarily go away, nor does it get recycled. Only 30% of American households actually put stuff in their bin, and 9% of the world recycle, which is not a good number at all. And that means you're putting it in the bin. It doesn't necessarily mean it's being put into another product. So we need to work on changing that. Three million plastic water bottles are what Americans use in one hour. These numbers are staggering. It just means there's way too much plastic and we need to rethink what we're doing and what we're buying and, and how we're washing stuff. And this is the main reason why I do what we do. The animals are impacted. Um, the animals don't understand this is not part of their natural world. It has a smell on it. As soon as a plastic hits the, as soon as trash hits the ocean, it gets an algae. They think it's their food. They have no way to know it's not. So this is something that I fight very hard every day to protect um, the unknowns happening to these animals from ingestion and from uh, entanglement. The trigger fish down on the lower left is a very curious fish. We've unfortunately found them inside of jugs, let alone the holes that they make in plastic jugs we find on the beach as well. Um, the plastic bag it is up in the upper right corner here, it's le next to the jellyfish. The turtle doesn't know that the bag is not a jellyfish, so he's going to ingest that. And the jellyfish is just one of the loggerhead's favorite treats. Um, or that the hatchling gets caught in the cup. So we need to rework this stuff. The science is here. This is a photo uh, down on the bottom of what came out of that turtle. It's in her hands and then it's in that tray and that turtle could not pass that plastic. So he may have eventually died. Um, he did get weakened and he was brought into gumbo limbo um, to I think be rehabilitated, but we for the ones that we do rehabilitate, there's so many more out there that are not getting uh, the help that they need. Um, now, they are actually you. You will inherit this. And um, my crew that comes out with us, the students that are out on the beach, and I believe yourself as well, you are very eager to help fix it. So this generations before you, shame on us, created this problem. And there are now a lot of answers out there and solutions for you guys to grab hold of to, to help um, fix the problem that we all created and you're inheriting. So yes, you do have the power to make change. And unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, something, nothing is going to get better. It's not. And that may be familiar to some of you. It's the Lorax from Dr. Seuss. We all need to do our part with reusable bags. You may be helping with the shopping. You um, can at least let, if you're not helping with the shopping, you can at least make sure that uh, who's ever doing the shopping can get their reusable bags. They're mo very readily available out there now, and they're so much better than plastic bags because, again, when they're out there, I see them floating in trees. I see them caught in bushes. I see them in parks, and I pick them up, and I throw them away, or I take them home, and I... Um, throw them away to make sure they're getting disposed of correctly. But uh, if they end up in our, our stormwater drainage systems, they're, they're messing with that as well, clogging up our, our sewer systems and our drainage systems, which then flood our streets, but then also getting to the animals, which are inadvertently eating them because they don't know they're not their food. And water bottles are now so much more, reusable water bottles are so much more readily available 
to use. And our tap water um, is very, most of these bottles that you buy in the store are tap water anyway. It's it's good to drink. You can fill it. And so many places um, are have these refillable water stations, like uh, Surface 71 is working on getting them into the public schools now, which is a phenomenal job. Um, and if it's not in your school, please um, reach out. We can, we can work to get one in your school that has a reusable water bottle filler. So you're saving these bottles um, and you're saving money. Bottom, bottom line, the piggy bank gets money in it because water from your tap is more or less free to you, but you're paying a lot of money for those water bottles in plastic bottles. So um, think about your piggy bank and um, the straws. Everybody, if, if you know, everybody says, oh, it's just one straw. Eight million straws are used in a certain amount of time frame throughout the day. Eight million. One, if one person says that. So we need to be the one that says no. We, you know, we spent a long, I know I have a child, she's 13. I, it took me a long time to teach her how to drink from a cup. And we all know how to drink from a cup. So, you know, there are other types of straws. If you really need a straw, there are bamboo straws, there are reusable straws, there are paper straws, metal straws. Um, if you need to have a straw, these the plastic straw is a no-go. And most uh, West Palm Beach businesses should not be having straws anyway. They're banned in the in the city of West Palm Beach and in, in Palm Beach. And many other cities and municipalities are doing that as well. If you're going to buy water, you can now hopefully find an alternative to a plastic water bottle with an aluminum can or a carton, which is made out of cardboard. This is one uh, my daughter, uh, we like Gatorade in the summertime when we're out doing our beach cleanups and sports events and stuff and, and riding. So this is another great piggy bank story where you've got the larger powder container, which is $9 versus what you would spend on buying what it makes is 64 bottles. For it. So that's $192 less uh, the eight bucks. I didn't put inflation in there. Less the $8 that that powdered container costs. It's $184 of savings in your piggy bank. If you use the powder form and it's kind of like a science project, it tastes exactly the same. Trust me. All the different flavors are all are the same in the powder form. And this is how many bottles and how many bottle caps you're going to save from the environment just by using the powdered form versus buying that Gatorade there. We make it, we put it in a jug in our fridge. And if we're going to go out, we put it in our reusable water bottles. So it's a simple solution. One simple solution to change a habit that you may um, have. This, I tell people, if it's a hurricane coming or you do have to drink bottled water, buy it in these containers with the spout. The two larger spouts will save this many bottles. So it's a huge savings of plastic in the environment, money in your pocket, and the paradise that we need to protect. Every um, cleaning product has an alternative. If you use Tide or Gain or whatever else it is out there that's in a jug, you can find it in powder form. The Coca-Cola comes in a can form. Cascade, if you do dishwashing and you're helping out at the house, the pods are terrible. The pods are leaching not only small pieces of plastic into the water environment, but chemicals that that plastic is made of surrounding that pod. So the powder, much better way to go, as well as the powder, the, sorry, the pods of, of laundry, Ugh, powder, much better way to go. Pods are no good. Utensils, there are plant-based utensils now. There are bamboo paper bamboo-based utensils, and if you're at home, tell the takeout person you don't want the plastic, you have silverware at home, which you wash. So there are definitely, definitely many different ways for you to make change at home. One of them I urge you all to take um, into your world, and that would make a big difference. So what we'll do, what we're trying to do here, and what I'm trying to get many people that I talk to to do is refuse just don't buy it in the first place. Don't buy that plastic water bottle. Make sure you take your own reusable one with you to school, to the park, or to the beach. And then if you did buy that plastic water bottle, reuse it a few times. And then um, reduce it by um, making it into something else. Or uh, I use Chinese food containers as Tupperware. Or um, I present things in them because I don't cook. When it's my night to cook, I order it in Chinese, and we reuse those Chinese containers over and over and over again. And then lastly, recycle what you do have um, and recycle it correctly. The Solid Waste Authority does a phenomenal job of educating people on how to recycle correctly. Um, and then from you, it goes to your friends and your family members and your teachers. Um, spread the word. 
And I can't tell you how important it is for individuals in your age group, even though you're not ready to vote yet or illegally voting, speaking to your local leaders, those in positions of city council, town council, county council, county commissions. Um, I've talked to council members for years about banning plastic straws, and we had a group from, um, I forget the schools, two different schools come to speak in front of the county commission and in front of um, West Palm Beach Council and Town Council in Palm Beach, talking and urging them to pass ordinances about uh, upholding laws for uh, straws and plastic uh, and balloons and, and plastic bottles and plastic bags. And they, the towns passed ordinances with your voice being heard. Um, so it's it's your strength that you have right now. Your job is to be a student and to learn everything that you can and to focus on your future, but also to know that your, your voice is a very important one, even um, as young as you are. And that is that. Everyone, please join me with a huge round of applause. <laughs> awesome. That was really inspirational. There were so many things that I learned. And if you all want to learn more, please feel free to visit the website up here. You can see www.friendsofpalmbeach.com. So for my favorite session, is everyone ready for the Q&A session? <laughs> All right, we see everybody getting excited. So this is the time. Ooh, I'm ready. Bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. <laughs> she's ready, she's ready. So let's go ahead and please input any questions you have. And um, as the questions start rolling in, Diane is ready to answer them. So I have a question for her in the meantime as these questions start rolling in. is um, I know plastics is something that is huge, um, a huge concern, you know, all throughout the world. But... What other organizations have had a great advancement in regards to like collecting or just reusing uh, the plastic itself? And what exactly are they doing? Um, well, there's many different organizations that are doing um, cleanups on a, on a sporadic basis. There are, um, from NGO's perspective, Four Ocean is a large uh, for profit company that's doing um, work in that arena, by, but but selling plastic is not, uh, you know, they're selling plastic bracelets. I, you know, um, they're doing good work, they're doing good cleanups. Um, there's Plastic uh, Pollution Coalition, there's Oceana, um, there's so many groups that are out there fighting the fight and there are, what I'm more happy to talk about are the alternatives that are available to purchase um, because I would rather be put out of work. I would rather be put out of business because I don't want to have any more plastics in the world. Recycling to me is the, as I said, the fourth option. Let's not be the consumer of this plastics. Let's, let's buy the re alternatives. So there are so many alternatives in cleansing, uh, cleaning products. Um, there's Blue Land, there's Mayoria, there's True Earth for laundry detergents, which don't also put the chemicals into our water supply. Um, so the um, companies like I, I had up there that are putting up water in glass, water in aluminum, water in non-plastic um, re receptacles is is the way to go. You'll find them more and more. Um, there's websites to look for. I don't have them readily off the top of my head, but the alternatives are there to eliminate um, these products from being in our environment in the first place. The cleanups, like I said, is a band-aid for now because we really need to stop the single-use plastics um, from, from our environment, from being produced. And uh, the oil companies are behind the reinvention of plastic. Sheeting is the next thing and the latest thing. Um, you, you buy a, a toy and it's wrapped in so many different plastics. And um, it, it, we need to send a message and a huge message to these um, corporations and manufacturing uh, industries that are creating more and more plastic just to be able to put more money in their pockets to the detriment of our health. Studies are, are shown that plastics are in our lungs. It's in our blood. Um, it's not just the animals that are being infected by this. So we need to make sure that we're doing our job to no longer consume um, Yes, cleanups, please help and do not litter. But the job is, is more so in the hands of the consumption and the consumerism. Yeah, that makes complete sense, right? If, if we manage on what we do on a daily basis, then 
there's less trash out, therefore less cleanups that need to be done. But yeah, please feel free to volunteer on any beach cleanups or any events that happen locally. So we have a bunch of more questions that have been coming in. And um, another question from the class of Ms. Ramos, Jenny Ramos, is what's your favorite part of your job? <laughs> um, well, honestly, the favorite part is when the hatchlings come out every summer um, and I'm out there and I get to witness it um, because the daily collection of this weighs on my heart and my soul. Um, the trash that they're inundated with um, really takes a toll um, on my my passion to do this because it, it exists. But the, my favorite part is is seeing the hatchlings um, and seeing a clean beach as well as my crew who don't always, um, most of the individuals I've hired from Vita Nova have not even gone to the beach. They've now taken on this role and left me to go to uh, clean up their their apartment buildings and their parks around them. And they've, they've taken this under their wing as well to the education that I've talked to them, to them about and talked to others has um, been absorbed. And where they may not have uh, cared about the environment before, they might have been on their phone and they go to the mall and they do whatever they do on a normal kid's day because um, they're young as well. They're now um, have a, a, a stronger, bigger picture view of, of their world and, and it impacts them um, in a bigger way. Awesome. Thank you for that. So next question is, what is the most difficult challenge you have ever faced? Ever in my life? Um, I, uh, quite a few. Um, I did a, uh, a debrief on myself at one point and I realized that I, I follow my fears to tackle them because I never wanted anything to stymie me in having the life that I meant to live. And we only have one life. So I think um, tackling the fear of presentation um, because in life it comes out in so many forms, not just speech and debate, but it comes out in um, me now speaking what I'm passionate about and wanting others to know about it. And in my job as a trader, I was shy, but I overcame that to um, be better, be the best I could be because I needed to be in order to be in that man's world that existed back in the late eighties to be seen as uh, competent and professional. I had to overcome a, the challenge of, of speaking even and, and, um, feeling that confidence within me. So it was a, um, you know, a, a, a practice and an exercise with myself to know that I knew it, to know that I had the smarts and to know that I had just as much um, ability to do the job as anybody else. And I got the gumption within myself to um, overcome my fear of, of presenting and speaking and um, and just doing my day to day, which that had a lot of in it. Um, even though I didn't realize it, you are, but you find yourself um, needing to make a plea or negotiating or in front of a room or um, just in different scenarios where you have a, a thought or you want it to be heard. Um, so you need to overcome your internal fears in order to get what you want out into the, into the world. So you yourself can feel confident and, um, and better about things. But most recently, the most difficult challenge um, was working within a, um, you know, the beach environment and making it happen where they really didn't want it to be happen. They really didn't want it done. They didn't do it. The beach wasn't uh, a real main cleaning focus. And I knew the trash was coming in just because of 30 years underwater and 30 years in that environment. So I had to convince people. I had to educate people. So the teacher came out of me, I guess, again, and the present presenter came out of me. Um, and it, I guess the most difficult challenge you've ever faced is only going to come back to anything that you might have fear of and overcoming that fear because people will have so many different answers to that. And I could give you a litany of answers to that. But um, at the end of the day, it comes to being able to face what part of that challenge you don't feel comfortable overcoming and doing it anyway because you need to because you're it's important to you that's awesome we can tell you overcame your fear because today's presentation was truly amazing so another question <laughs> <laughs> another Thank question you. that we have is um let's see we do have a lot of questions so 
What company other than Coca Cola produces most pollution? It's a great question. Well, um, there are, there are so many statistics out there. Um, you, I don't have them in front of me, but they're out there to to get it right, easily off of Google. Um, you know, I would think behind them is probably Pepsi. <laughs> uh, the global uh, impact that Coke and Pepsi and Nestle and um, have and McDonald's with their straws and Starbucks. You know, uh, I couldn't put them in, in rank order, but everything you have on your daily day or week or month that you have a straw, you have a plastic cup, um, you know, this, this is not readily disposed of, nor is it recycle, la bowl. So um, they're, they're up there. You, you can, if you needed to get it, you could get it off, the, off of the internet, but um, it's, it's anything that is uh, plastic, single-use plastic. Is, is the is the top you know and cigarette butts is up there as well um, for some reason they're they're put into the beach they're thrown out windows they're just not disposed of correctly and they are made of plastic and they are made of all kinds of different chemicals so um, the number one polluted item collected is cigarette butts behind caps and plastic uh, single-use plastic items awesome uh, thank you for that so this is a two-part question is uh, one question was how big is your team and how many hours do they work in a week? And also, what's the biggest beach cleanup you've done so far? My crew right now is a small but mighty crew. We have four of us, um, uh, four out on the ground. I've been more running the funding side of it all and the recon, and I'm the supply person and, um, and whatnot. But it's um, three individuals in the truck and one individual on the beach vehicle. We've had... Um, five in the truck and then we've had actually two trucks so we've had eight individuals at different times covid sort of curtailed that um and i have good working hard working individuals that are out from 7 a.m to 2 p.m every day and uh, that changes with the weather of course it can change if there isn't that much trash their day is earlier um but it is pretty much the same schedule every week um and that's been that way since 2015 and will continue. And I am looking to hire for a second truck. Now the COVID sort of on the down low and um, hopefully a uh, downward turn. And we will be back to six or seven or eight individuals doing cleanups um, on the beach because it, it just doesn't stop. It's, it's, it, there's a plethora of trash out there. My largest cleanup, as far as people, I think we had about 140 um, one time, maybe. Um, and, you know, many hands make for less work, which I love. But it's so funny because there's also a Murphy's Law saying where, you know, on the day that I have the most hands, there's not all that trash. Because the winds may have been died down and it just didn't come to the beach. It wasn't pushed ashore. And I'm not cleaning beaches that people are leaving trash on. I'm cleaning the beaches where the ocean is literally spitting it out onto the beach. Um, so it, I could have eight people show up and it'd be the dirtiest beach ever, but those eight people will clean that beach. And, um, so it's not really the numbers. It's, it's the fight in the dog, as they say, and how much you really want to get done. I allow people to go out to their parks, to their streets. If they have hours that they need to get, take a photograph of it and do it, just do it. And, and it's important that we just do it. Awesome. Thank you. So how many cleanups have I done? I've done over 300 cleanups. 300. Wow. That's a lot yeah. more to come. So please all feel free, uh, feel free to join. Um, so another question is during your scuba diving experience, what type of animals have you encountered with? Oh, um, the elusive one um, is always the one you want to see, but it's the shark. Uh, sharks are, are, are wonderful. Octopus are wonderful. Um, there's everything out right here and you can snorkel. You don't have to scuba dive, but scuba diving to me is my peace. Like I said, it's my Zen. Um, I go to Southeast Asia. I've gone to Australia and the Red Sea. It, it pulls you in places that you may never have gone. Uh, seeing the pyramids of Giza and then going underwater in the Red Sea was my most phenomenal trip. Um, but manta rays, uh, whale sharks, um, humpback whales of the silver banks. That's just a snorkel. Um, these animals are 
are amazing. The dolphins that are out there, the teeny tiny little damselfish that will protect their nests like you wouldn't believe. If they were any bigger, there wouldn't be any fish in the ocean because they are fierce and they are protective and they are just beautiful. You see them as sergeant majors on near shore reefs. They're striped fish. Um, right under the Blue Heron Bridge, there are seahorses and amazing amounts of octopus. Um, I love the sharks. I love the turtles, of course. The turtles are my favorites. They interact. Grouper interact. I can't eat grouper anymore. I can't eat tuna anymore. Uh, I don't eat squid or calamari. Um, these animals are, are intelligent. They are, um, you know, smarter than some Labradors that you know. And some Labradors are smart. Some Labradors aren't so smart. Um, it's just an amazing underwater world. It's a symbiotic world, which means every animal and every creature, the coral included, works together to keep this um, environment in its pristine paradise. And our impact as humans has been so devastating in many areas. But like you'll see on an overpass going down 95, you'll see a tree. You can't stop Mother Nature. She wants to be everywhere. And we're we're doing our best to, to suppress her. But Mother Nature is an amazing, amazing um, uh, resource that we have, an amazing uh, paradise that we have to enjoy, and especially here in South Florida, where you can walk out to the parks at the Everglades, and you can walk to the beach, and there's um, there's so much to be a part of. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. That was the last question. Thank you all okay. so much. Uh, before we wrap up, we want to encourage you all to also take action. So what's happening on Sunday? We're having our beach cleanup. So uh, at Coral Cove Beach, 8.30 a.m. is registration, and from 9 to 11, we'll be doing the cleanup. If you want to sign up, please go to our landing page at www.weloveyouusa.org, and we'll also be sending over the flyer. So, Diane, before we wrap up, can we say bye to everyone? Oh, yes. Help All me. right, ready? One, two, three. We love you. We, we you. love you. We love you. <laughs> Everyone, I hope you all have an amazing day. Thank you so much, Diane. It's been a pleasure. Have a great one, everyone. See you tomorrow.